The trace evidence section consists of several different sub-disciplines. The term trace evidence typically refers to evidence occurring in sizes so small that it can be transferred or exchanged between two surfaces without being noticed, showing contact between people, a person and an object, or between two objects. The premise behind the science of trace evidence is simple. Anytime a person or object come in contact with something or someone else, there is a transfer that takes place. A hair from the suspect is left on the victim, a carpet fiber stuck to a suspect's shoe, paint transferred to the body during a hit and run. The trace evidence section offers the examination of microscopic evidence, fibers, textiles, hair, paints and coatings, plastics and polymers, glass, gunshot primer residue, fractured materials, and the identification of unknown materials. Even minute evidence can provide valuable leads for investigators. Trace evidence scientists, also known as microanalysts, have eyes for detail and their work is always tedious. Forensic analysis of fiber and textile evidence often provides strong evidence of an association in criminal cases. Fibers can be transferred from person to person and place to place, indicating what environment someone has been in. Question fibers are compared to the suspected source of origin through a rigorous protocol, including the use of stereo, bright field, polarized light, fluorescence, and comparison microscopy, melting point determinations, Fourier transform infrared microspectroscopy, or FTIR, and microspectrophotometry, or MSP. Finding a match between two different fiber sources can indicate that they were in contact. Carpet and upholstery fibers can be recognized as such and can provide valuable information to investigators, often helping them reconstruct a crime scene or locate a suspect. Even though the textile market is ever-changing, forensic fiber examiners must be familiar with the various types of fibers and know which are most commonly used and which are rare. This knowledge is critical when determining the significance of a fiber match. Fiber examiners also perform examinations to determine if garments have been cut or torn, which becomes important in sexual assault cases where there is a question as to whether the act was consensual or forced. Hair collected at a crime scene can provide investigative information concerning the donor when trying to develop a suspect in a case. The average human sheds approximately 100 hairs a day, making it possible that the perpetrator's hair will be found at a crime scene or on the clothing of the victim. Hair examiners can determine whether the hair is animal or human. If of human origin, the race of the donor and area of the body from which it originated can be determined. Microscopical examination can reveal if the hair was cut, pulled, or naturally shed. Examiners can determine if the hair originated from a living or dead individual and if the hair was subjected to artificial treatments such as bleaching or coloring. Analysis may also reveal whether damage due to disease, exposure to fire, or crushing is present. If a suspect has already been identified, the questioned hairs can be microscopically compared to the known hair of the suspect. Questioned hair or pubic hairs from a crime scene are compared to a sample of known hair from the suspected donor using a comparison microscope. Many features are compared, and if the questioned and known hairs are alike, it can be concluded that the questioned hair originated from the suspect or someone else with hair having all the same distinctive features. Because it is possible, although uncommon, for two people to have hair that cannot be distinguished under the microscope, all matching hairs are subjected to further testing of the DNA contained in the root of the hair. Any material that is torn, broken, or otherwise separated can be examined to determine if two or more pieces were at one time a single piece. Every type of material separates in a unique way based on its composition, and its pieces have the potential to be positively matched back to each other. Examples of materials an analyst can examine are plastic, glass, metal, tape, wood, paper, and fabric. A paint transfer can occur in a variety of crimes, such as homicides, vehicular hit and runs, sexual assaults, and burglaries. A paint examination can involve either the development of information to aid an investigator or a comparison between a questioned paint sample from a crime scene and a known source of paint. The examiner uses a variety of techniques to reach a conclusion as to whether or not the questioned sample could have come from the suspected object and how significant the match is. One of the more challenging tasks of a paint examiner is to determine the color, year, make, and model of a suspect vehicle that has deposited microscopic bits of paint on the clothing of a victim or object but has fled the crime scene. 
the examiner would begin by locating and recovering the microscopic particles of paint from the victim's clothing. And then the paint must be analyzed and compared to reference collections and databases which catalog what colors and formulations of paint are used by which automobile manufacturers. Like many other products, the paint industry is constantly changing. The PDQ, or Paint Data Query, a database developed by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, contains chemical and physical information about the thousands of paint systems used on vehicles dating back to the early 1970s. The PDQ is the primary tool available to forensic analysts for use in providing vehicle year, make, or model information to the law enforcement community. The techniques used by paint examiners are the same as those used in the examination of plastics and polymers. Any material made from plastic, including duct tape, garbage bags, adhesives, vehicle lenses, or rubber, may be submitted to the crime laboratory for comparison. As with many of the trace evidence disciplines, a vast knowledge and understanding of the materials, how they are produced, and what variation exists among the products is critical for the examination of plastics and polymers. Vehicle year, make, and model can be determined from the vehicle parts left behind at a crime scene. In some cases, it is important to identify a particular material left behind at the crime scene or found in the possession of the suspect. This examination, referred to as general materials examination, requires the use of a wide variety of analytical techniques. One of the more common items submitted to the laboratory for identification is currency suspected of having dye stains originated from the bank security dye packs that have exploded during a bank robbery. Items can also be checked for the presence of self-defense sprays, fire extinguisher residue, metals, cosmetics, and building materials. A glass analyst can determine whether samples of glass could have originated from the same source by observing a variety of physical, optical, and elemental properties of the glass. Ultraviolet light, stereo microscopy, bright field, and polarized light microscopy are used to determine the physical and optical characteristics of glass. The refractive index and density of the glasses could also be determined. A compositional analysis of the glass is also performed to determine and compare the chemical elements present in the glass. An analyst is able to determine from which side a window has been broken by examining the fracture characteristics of a radial crack once the pieces have been reassembled. This can be important when verifying whether a reported entry to a dwelling is accurate or perhaps staged. When a firearm is discharged, escaping gases from the weapon deposit gunshot primer residue, or GSR, on the skin of the shooter's hands, on the clothing of the shooter, or on any object or person in close proximity to the shooter. In this gaseous cloud are particles composed of primer residue. While primer compositions vary with different types of ammunition and different manufacturers, the most common constituents of primers are lead, barium, and antimony. GSR analysts utilize the scanning electron microscope with energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy, SEM, EDS, to analyze particles collected from the hands of suspected shooters using adhesive covered stubs from a GSR collection kit. The SEM EDS provides analysts with an image of any particles collected, as well as the chemical composition of those particles. Analysis and characterization of the elements lead, barium, and antimony are helpful in determining if a suspect fired, handled, or was in close proximity to a weapon when it was fired.